Howdy folks, this is Party1119 with Head Frame Hunters. Today we're uh, shooting episode 7 of our underground mining series. So, you know, obviously we got our 911B down the down the decline. Um, actually, just a quick shout out I have to give. So I will warrant that this uh, damn scrubber tank is leaking. But, uh, so I went up to Cripple Creek, Colorado. About a week and a half ago, went to the it was the Molly Kathleen Gold Mine tour. I was just up there with some family for a family reunion, and uh, we ended up getting not getting the usual tour guide. Uh, we got their maintenance guy, who, as you can imagine, we got I have a lot in common with him. Uh, turns out he also rebuilt a, a couple of these 911s. And he passed off uh, some little. Uh, tricks of the trade, one of them being running uh, Murphy oil soap in a water scrubber. And would you believe it went from, uh, you know, decent amount of water vapor, knox, soot, etc. coming out the tailpipe to at idle, no visible emissions, at full throttle, uh, running up and down the decline, probably a 60 percent reduction granted we were that's compared to a an empty scrubber uh, but there's a lot less uh, diesel uh, there's a, there's a you can't smell it as much my words are failing me I just uh, worked a 12 and a half hour night shift last night got about a four hour nap in the day and then came up to the mine tonight so uh, bear with me if I'm uh, saying anything funny but uh, yeah, that, that Murphy oil soap really works. You know, the, the decline smells a lot better. It doesn't smell as much like diesel. just smells a lot like the soap, which is, you know, pretty pleasant. Um, I think what I'm going to try doing is uh, getting either some, like, a flexible epoxy-type product or brushable flex seal, which I guess has a working temperature of 350 degrees. I should have brought a thermometer up so I could shoot the, the inside of the scrubber see what kind of temperatures we're getting on it but you know just use that rather than welding it because you know i'm sure as this thing uh you know takes knocks it'll wind up with other small pinhole leaks might just use steel stick or something you know we'll, we'll make it work it's not rocket surgery uh, but what we're here for is to do some sampling on the magazine drift so there's a, a couple targets down here and I will uh, say targets. I apologize for the crappy illumination right now. So, uh, what I'm going after right now is this pile of material sitting in front of Big Chungus. Uh, it's probably, I don't know, five tons. But if you look, look, look at this, look at this stuff. It's, it's beautiful. It's, yeah, there's a little bit of wall rock in there. This looks, this looks very good. It looks excellent. It's good looking material and it's just, you know, sitting here right for the taking. And there's another much larger pile just beyond it. That's probably about 20 tons. I'd like to sample that as well. And uh, also sample the face back there. Well, we're now here at the face of the magazine drift. Uh, so I'm finding a lot of interesting stuff here. So. Now, obviously, we're still on vein, and there's some material in here that I definitely like the looks of. It doesn't look like uh, the most consistently high grade, but you know, there's areas like uh, I mean here that they don't look bad. A little bit of a little bit of matcher might. Uh, now that is cool. Uh, it's a, a Vug. Yeah. Make sure that the angling is right in my light. 
That's cool. And then you see how it's interspersed with uh, this, this brecciated material. And up in there, you know, I'm liking some of that. Wouldn't be a, a bad idea to spray this face down, wash out uh, a lot of the fault gouge, clay, etc. Uh, there's something else here that is interesting. I'm gonna see if I can get the angles right. So, uh, my light's not gonna really help. I'm not really gonna do the trick. So, you see that structure, that, uh, that bedding plane right there. There's a couple bedding planes here that strike in a very different direction than I would have expected. The another something interesting is that 80 foot mark. I don't know if that's 80 feet from the center of the decline or uh, 80 feet from uh, where the where this drift begins. Uh, it'll it only make maybe six eight feet of difference anyhow. But we were thinking there was 500 tons mined out of here out of consistent 10 by 10, and this is a consistent minimum 10 by 10 and it blows out to 15 in places at a consistent 10 foot by 10 foot cross-sectional size uh, we end up with a uh, neighborhood of 700 tons just from the drift production and probably another 150 if I were to guess from the stope also notice that there are no exploratory holes going up into the back. Uh, now it, it is starting to get fairly highly brecciated up there, so I don't know how well it runs. They might have taken some chip samples out of a out of a IMCO bucket and just you know not really gotten any values, or they might just not have sampled it. That's kind of a, a neat part right there. You see just the six o'clock of my lamp spot. There's a chunk of uh, andesite with a, like a half inch quartz stringer in it. But there's only one exploratory hole that was done with an air track right there uh, at about six and a half feet above the drift floor. I can't see how far back it goes, but that was either uh, an exploratory long hole or uh, or just being used to re as a our break to reaming system to you know improve fragmentation improve pull there's also two bootlegged air track holes right there but that's enough of that uh, long story short is that you know I pretty well don't mind what I'm seeing here, so I'm going to sample it. I'll uh, get my PPE on. And I did bring a respirator this time. Get PPE on and start drilling. See what we find.
this is what a uh, little hammer drill sample from the magazine drift face yielded us. Um, you know, none of it's incredible. I'd say it's all pretty well objectively decent. Iron stained quartz. I'm not seeing uh, nearly as much in the way of sulfide as I would like. Um, you know, you can't assay visually. If I were to guess, this stuff is going to run uh, maybe 10th ounce and 5. And it doesn't look, uh, doesn't look incredible. But, you know, it's always better to know. Because uh, this is absolutely the easiest working face in this mine for us to, for us to mine. And if we can come in here and we can mine stuff that's even worth 300 bucks a ton, it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. Actually, uh, if it's 0.10 and 5, you know, that'd be almost in, just about enough to justify mining, to be completely honest. Just a quick look at this thing. It's a DeWalt it's an SDS Plus. Runs off of uh, their 20 volt max batteries. It's a it's a good unit. Right now we're I'm just using a, a chisel, and I dress those chisels on a bench grinder after uh, each sample trip. Cause they'll they'll wear. I mean this stuff is hard rock. They they absolutely will wear. But there's a. Uh, there's enough on the head of that chisel that we can run it on a bench grinder for a while. So that's all the uh, all the sampling that I'm going to be doing for today. Something else you may have noticed is that uh, I turned the bucket of the Imco and articulated the machine and put the bucket into the rib. Now, if you haven't worked in a mine, you're probably asking, well, why would you do that? It's a safety measure. So this machine does have essentially triply redundant brakes. It has the, the transmission hydrostatic brake. It has a uh, secondary disc brakes, and it has a driveline parking drum brake. But we just like to, you know, be... be rather safe than sorry. So I articulate the machine into the rib. If by some uh, freak accident or freak event it were to try to start rolling, it would just roll maybe two inches more and bump into the rib and come to rest. Wouldn't hurt anything. Uh, we've got everything uh, everything pulled back except for uh, one sample bucket. So I'll grab that, we gear it out at that point, start the machine, curl the bucket up all the way, just so I don't risk uh, losing sample buckets, losing samples. I'd be pretty upset if that were to happen, tramming out of here. And uh, go ahead and bring her topside, see what uh, Pecos has got going on with some of the utility work up there. Now just... Uh, so y'all can see how much cleaner this machine runs with that scrubber running, or that scrubber uh, filled up, especially with that oil soap. Let's go to starter.